Bernard Tobin, now uh, joined by Jake Monroe, MAFRA's a soil management specialist. Jake, how's it going? Good, Bernard. Thanks for having me on. Hey, I want to talk about um, something uh, you know we don't talk a lot about. And that's organic soybeans, and uh, you know um, a lot of organic soybeans grown in the U.S. Um, a lot of it tillage based, and uh, you've been doing some work on cover crop based, no till organic soybeans, and I want to talk a little bit about that with you and. Tell us a little bit about where this research started. I know you've done a lot of research on what's happening in the U.S. in the U.S. and you're doing your own trials. Yeah, so we um, we started a multi-site trial last year with Ontario Soil and Crop Improvement Association through a, a Tier Two project grant, um, and that really was motivated by what I saw in in Perth County, actually, with a, an organic grower who's been using cereal rye and had his own roller crimper manufactured and has been using those tools to, to grow no-till organic soybeans for, for a few years. And I saw him doing it with quite a bit, bit of success, and I thought, let's see if we can take this to other parts of the province and, and try to replicate that. Talk about, I guess, um, you know, what happens in the field here, Jake. I mean, obviously, we, we talked about tillages out of the question. You know, what needs to happen for this to go well? Yeah, so there's a few keys to success here. So, and, and just the, to back up a minute, the, the concept really is to is to – grow a, a cereal cover crop and cereal rye has been the most consistent performer of the winter cereals. So you, you grow that rye, you, you seed it relatively early in the fall and you get it nice and thick. You wait until it's flowering, which in Ontario is typically somewhere in the first week of June or maybe the second week of June. So, um, and then you come in with a crimper. So basically a drum with, with chevron shaped uh, metal blades. You, you crimp that rye, lay it down flat, crimp the stem in multiple places and that ideally that kills the the rye and lays it down flat as a mulch so you're basically competing with early season weeds with the rye crop in there in around this time of year and then you create a mulch that hopefully or ideally is thick enough to prevent weeds from emerging and competing with your soybeans talk a little bit about i guess the, the first year results um you know yield is always a big factor how uh, how, how how do they stack up yeah so we we had a couple of strip trials where we compared basically standard production practices to the, the cover crop based organic no till and long story short we had lower yields in the organic no till so we, at one site we had 9 bushels per acre less at uh, at a small plot site in Alora we had uh, 14 bushels less and now that was partly due to stand stand issues and some uh, surface compaction in the spring um, but nonetheless we we certainly had lower yields this year um, we also, ha- however, had some observational sites, some some sites that were full or partial fields with the organic no-till soybeans being grown in them. And we had a range of, of yields there, but at the high end, we had 38 bushels on a, on a full field and 47 bushels on a full field of organic soybeans grown this way, um, which which was quite encouraging. Um, so we, we, we kind of have seen both sides of it, and we're taking what we've learned from from that year and trying to put it into practice for the second year of the project this year. Let's talk about some of the takeaways from from year one. Uh, obviously, um, you know, selecting fields with with low weed pressure, low weed, you know, perennial weed pressure. Yeah. So this this system and the rye in particular is is pretty effective uh, against certain types of weeds. So quite effective against annuals like uh, like lambs quarters and pigweed. We certainly saw that this year at a couple of the sites. It's not as good, however, on on uh, perennials that have a you know good root reserve and have the ability to push through that mulch so you know Canada thistle or, or south thistle those are weeds that aren't going to be as effectively controlled so um, site selection is big um, of course there's no ideal field with with no perennial weed pressure but for organic growers looking to have success with this system I think it's a matter of identifying some of your fields that uh, that have lower perennial weed pressure and in general have have you know moderate weed pressure you also notice that i think you're you're saying you need to seed that rye early and you got to bump up that soybean rate the seeding rate yeah exactly those are two other keys so seeding that rye early so that you get good tillering and you also have good canopy uh you know canopy cover early in the spring so this time of year you'd like to see that rye you know starting to thicken out um competing with weeds early so we typically um seeded all of our sites last year before the beginning of October and took a similar approach um, uh, the year before. So 
Uh, that's what's been found in New York State, Wisconsin is, uh, you know, September, mid, mid to late September seeding is kind of what you're looking for for the rye. When it comes to the soybeans, this is a very challenging environment for those soybeans to, to grow up through. They're growing through a mulch that in some cases might be two, three or four inches thick. Um, so a, a high seeding rate early is one of those adaptive management strategies um, that can really be helpful in the system. So you know, recommendations from the U.S. are typically somewhere in the range of 225,000 to 275,000 seeds per acre. And that's from seeding rate trials that have been done over the last number of years. Uh, we found this year that seeding rate was a big factor. And this coming season at our trials, we're going to be shooting for close to 300,000 seeds per acre to try to give the best chance of success possible. Right. Now, you're back in the field this summer with uh, OSCIA and doing some more trials. Um, um, I guess we'll see some results on that in the coming year. But uh, for short term, uh, you have posted an article on Field Crop News uh, with some more details. I encourage everybody to have a read of that. Jake, looking forward to uh, catching up with you a little later in the year. Um, thank you for stopping by, and we'll, as I say, we'll see you in the field. You're very welcome, Bernard. Thanks.